John likes tech and lives in Indiana, you know. Kevin likes the Dodgers and talks on the radio. John plays games on Xbox and on his Nintendo. While Kevin runs around LA with his mustachio, it's the Lack of Genius Podcast. In your ear holes at last. They don't know they're Mars from Venus, that's why it's the Lack of Genius Podcast. Yo, John. Hey, Kevin. Yeah, you know what that thing? I'm, you know, I'm pretty good, man. It's always, it's always, I look forward to this time of week every week. I do too. To spend it with you and get to talk to a microphone that eventually goes out to human beings' ears. I agree. It's a good deal. It's been fun. It has been Keep fun. Keep doing it. Yeah, I, I have no plans to stop. Um, you know, for those who are new to this podcast, Lack of Genius Podcast, John, as the theme song just said, lives in Indiana. I live here. He lives in Muncie, Indiana. I live in Southern California. I'm in Los Angeles, and um, and we are we have we have opposite interests. So what we do is we quiz each other every week on our areas of expertise, just to prove how much lack of genius the other person has. And as I mentioned, geography. Um, do you want to mm-hmm. fill in what uh, what this episode is uh, is about, John? We're doing our hometowns. Yeah, I'm doing Muncie and. Uh... Kevin's doing Lomita. Lomita, California is uh, is the small uh, suburban L.A. town that I live in. I guess I'll just start with a, a brief sort of, uh, n- I won't give anything away that's on the quiz, but yeah, Lomita is a small city. It's only about, uh, it's it's less than two square miles big. It's a, it's a, most people from L.A. don't even know that Lomita is a city in the greater Los Angeles area. It's uh, it's about 20 miles south of downtown LA. It's five miles from the Pacific Ocean, so it's uh, it's right near the beach. Um, and I was born and raised there, so it's um, it's a place that I love, and I'm I'm excited to talk about it. And and John, you live in the city of Muncie, Indiana. Well, I don't I don't live there anymore. I live about a half hour north, but that, yeah, Muncie's where I'm from. Still close by. I'm about a half hour north of Lomita, so how about that? We're both posers for our hometown. <laughs> Muncie, Indiana, is is what made you John. It is. So, um, so we have prepared five questions each for each other on our hometowns, mm-hmm. and you know, I realize that these are sort of uh, almost I, you could say obscure, unique, very um, not a lot of people know Muncie or or Lomita, but I feel like learning one another's hometowns really sort of tells a story about maybe the people, uh, who we are, maybe can give a fuller understanding of who these people who talk on, uh, talk on this microphone every week are, you know? Yeah. So I'm mm-hmm. excited to go for it. Um, but we, we, uh, we usually start with, uh, with the tidy up section, right? Yeah, we do, we've got some tidy up this week again. I'm not sure who's correct on this yet. <laughs> um, I'm still doing some research. But last week I mentioned that the map for Pawnee from Parks and Rec yes. is just the map of Muncie Upside Down. Yes. My sister told me that her understanding is it's the map of Muncie upside down and backwards. Oh, and then like mirrored, mirror image. Right. I haven't found a definite answer one way or the other. I've I've seen both. Mm-hmm. So I'm not sure which one it is. So if someone that happens to be listening to this has ties with Parks and Recs and knows for sure which one it was. Yeah. Let, let us know. know. Let us know. Or if you have tracing paper, you can um, take the map yeah. of Pawnee and trace it and then invert it and flip it upside down and see if it fits perfectly on the Muncie Internet. Do that work for us because we're just we're too lazy. Yeah, I mean, you can send us a picture on Facebook or on Instagram, Twitter. Yeah. yeah. Email it to us. We'll officially credit you yeah. as a researcher for Lack of Genius podcast. Yep. <laughs> that's good. That's good. Yes, uh, that's a good cleanup uh, because we're we're men of integrity, and if we say something incorrect, we want to clean it, tidy it up, and that's what the tidy yep. up section is for. So you're welcome. And then we move into our next section, right, which is our quiz section. Yeah, I mean, right now I think we've got one tie. I've won two of them, and I think you've won one, the first one. Oh, I won the first one, which is the most important one because that was about us. So I know it you was. better than you know me, which means I'm a better friend. I'm pretty sure that's how the math works out, right? Maybe, maybe. <laughs> we're, we're still figuring that one out. Uh, but you okay so, so all-time record is john two wins kevin one win and we have one tie right so either you could tie it so yep. we're two and two or i could pull out ahead i think john's gonna win today i think john's gonna win but i but i hope he doesn't i hope he loses hard <laughs> <laughs> okay so i am gonna ask you the first question in yep. the lomita quiz 
And, and by the way, as I say every week, um, these are available on lackofgenius.com. So you can take these quizzes before the episode. You could literally pause it right now and see how you do on the episode and then come back and hear how we did. Or you can just enjoy this. So here's number one for John about the city of Lomita, California. Which of these famous entertainers used to perform vaudeville acts at the Lomita Theater, which, yes, is located in, was located in Lomita, California. So famous entertainer used to perform vaudeville acts at the Lomita Theater. Is it A, Judy Garland, B, Marilyn Monroe, C, Lucille Ball, or D, Audrey Hepburn? Lucille Ball is the only one that stands out to me like she would actually perform vaudeville. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's not burlesque. Vaudeville is more comedic. And the other three really aren't, none of their roles were really comedic, I guess, from what I can remember. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go with Lucille Ball. That's your final answer? Yep. Ah. Ah. Sorry. Yeah, you know what's funny is as I was coming up with these answers, I thought Lucille Ball would be a really misleading (laughs) choice, which is funny because she was just talked about in our last episode. Um, Judy Garland is the correct answer. Okay. Wizard of Oz is what you know her from most uh, most famously. She was in a trio with her three sisters. Judy Garland is not her actual name. She was born, uh, I'm totally blanking, Francis. Her, her real name was Francis Gum. And they were the three sisters were known as the Gum Sisters, G-U-M-M. And they would go about and they would perform. And she was, she was very young when she did this. And it's funny because the way I worded the question was... Uh, used to perform vaudeville acts. That was always the fact I heard, but according to my research, mm-hmm. they literally only did, played one show there. They, they only did it once, but it is it is Lomita's claim to fame. Like People who grew up in Lomita are like, yeah, Judy Garland used to perform down the street. Um, <laughs> and yeah, that, that Lomita Theater is uh, no longer in existence, but it's pretty cool because it's uh, I see that building all the time. It's right in the heart of Lomita. It's now a karate school. Shout out uh, <laughs> M- Machida Karate Academy. So uh, pretty amazing, pretty amazing. But yeah, Judy Garland is our is our claim to fame. Well, I, I guess uh, that makes my next qu- or my first question for, about Muncie uh, a good one <laughs> because of a claim to fame. Yeah, look at us go. David Letterman and Jim Davis both went to this school in Muncie. Ooh, ooh. Purdue, Burris, Ball State, or IUPUM. Okay, now, Jim Davis, is that the sports broadcaster? No, the creator of Garfield. Oh, thank you, thank you. I'm trying to think who I'm thinking of. Uh, I'll come up. This may be a a tidy up section for next week. Okay, the creator of Garfield. There we go. And David Letterman, of course, late night host. uh, Everyone knows Mm -hmm. David Letterman. He's got a great beard now. Okay, it took me a second, but I do remember this because, as as we proved earlier, I'm the better friend, and I remember things about (laughs) you, and you earned a graduate degree from this university that David Letterman also went to. And if I'm wrong, I'm going to look like such a fool, but I'm pretty positive it was Ball State. And that's my final answer. Correct. <laughs> yeah, I'm a but I did friend. not earn a graduate degree. You earned, you earned a, you, I'm sorry, you earned a, wait, what did you earn? You earned a bachelor's, yes, but I knew it was your second, so I'm not that great a friend. Okay, Kevin, you can shut your mouth now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, Ball State, it was a teacher's college originally uh, that was started by the uh, Ball Brothers, as in the Ball Jar Company. Oh, no way. Yep, and David Letterman, I think I've mentioned this in the past, uh, did refer to Ball State as the Harvard of the Midwest. Yeah, which you have a degree uh, from, baby. I do. And there's actually a David Letterman building. Cool. And a David Letterman scholarship. Wow. My understanding, in order to qualify for the scholarship, you have to be a C-average communications major. Oh, gosh, that's me. That was literally me <laughs> in college. I could have earned a David Letterman scholarship. Unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, and back you know, back when he had his show on uh, CBS and everything, during Homecoming, he'd sent his guy to... Muncie for the homecoming events. That is great. That is great. He put Muncie on the map. That's fantastic. Um, I'll move on to number two for Lomita for you here. Lomita is the Spanish word for what? Is it little hill, little tree, little field, or Lil John? The rapper Lil John, get it? (laughs) I do. I also thought about the fact that Robin Hood has Little John, and I, I'm sure – did people make that comparison oh, yeah. to you all? Because how tall – I found out how tall John is the other day. It, it blew my mind. How tall are you, John? <laughs> Six foot seven. Six foot well, seven! 
or for those that prefer metric, just over two meters, like uh, 2.01, 2.02 meters. I love that you know that. Next time somebody asks you that, just 2.02 meters. Yeah. Oh, I, I do it all the time. And then they'll ask, you know, what's that in American? <laughs> Yeah, John is six like, seven. Really? has a has a burly beard. He looks. He very much looks like he's got that little John spirit too. So, anyways, <laughs> but I'm referring to the rapper Lil John. And is that what Lomita means? Is what you have to figure out right now. I'm guessing no, <laughs> uh, because I'm guessing that would be more Lil Juan. <laughs> um, Juanito. <laughs> I, I know very little Spanish. I took French in high school because everyone else took Spanish. I okay, to, good. I was hoping. I wanted, I wanted to be different, so I took French. Okay. I'm going to go with Little Hill for some reason. Okay. Just just your random throw at the dartboard? Yep, just a random throw. Okay, Little Hill, is that correct? Nice job. Yeah, I think that's yeah. I think that's good logic. Lomita, so Loma or Lomas means hills. And so that's what the L-O-M is. And I-T-A is sort of the, uh, what is that, the suffix for, in Spanish, for little. So, you know, that it, literally Juan would be, I think, would be Juanito. That means little Juan. <laughs> I, I'm not, I could be wrong on that. But, uh, yeah, Lomita means little hill. We are, um, it's funny because most of Lomita is pretty flat. There is a gradual mm-hmm. incline going one direction. But it does eventually go up a hill into what is known as Palos Verdes. This is where the rich people live in our community. It's like we're sort of at the bottom of the hill and we're looking up at, uh, at Palos Verdes and all the rich people in their nice houses. So, so you're looking at the city on the hill. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. We're the, we're the we're technically the little hole looking up at the, the city on the hill. So, um, all right. Well, let's move on to Muncie then. This is actually something I did not know until last year. Okay. But what was the name of the team from Muncie that was one of the founding teams of the NFL in 1920? Wow. I did not know that this this was the case until last year. So, well, go ahead and read me the choices, and then I'll ask my follow-up question. Uh, Flyers. Okay. Cardinals. Okay. Pacers. Transmissions. Transmissions. So, to clarify the question, this team actually was from and played in Muncie, or can can Mm -hmm. I ask that question? In 1920, and it was one of the founding teams of the NFL. One of the, I believe it was 11 teams chartered the NFL. No way. And so it was the Muncie Blanks. Mm Mm-hmm. Wow. This could be anything because, okay, look, the Flyers, I know them from uh, hockey. Uh, I can't even think of Philadelphia. God, why can't I think? It doesn't matter. Cardinals are in a lot of sports. Pacers are Indiana's huge basketball team. And Transmissions is so random. I want it to be Transmissions, but I don't know if I'm picking it yet. I don't think it's Pacers. I think, I mean, that would be a cool story is if they were an NFL. Oh, gosh, maybe it is the Pacers. It could be anything. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna choose the obscure answer, man. I'm saying it's transmissions. Let's do it. Incorrect. Dang it. It's the Flyers. Okay, so I wasn't even close. I mean, transmissions actually is a good guess Uh um, because there were uh, both uh, Chevrolet and Borg Warner were two big factories in Muncie for a very long time. Cool. I wondered if something like that was the case. In fact, the uh, the Chevy plant actually had, I think it was called the Muncie four speed that they developed as a transmission that went into like Corvettes and, and other things. Okay. So there's a history of transmissions in Muncie. Yeah. See, I knew that. That's why I guessed it. So. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's the flyers. And like I said, I didn't know that this was the thing until last year when the NFL was celebrating their hundredth anniversary. Wow. And they hel- had uh, draft picks being done in those 11 cities. Wow, so Muncie was a big deal. was on the map yeah. for last yeah. year. Yeah, so they held they they announced I think uh the Colts announced some of their draft picks from Muncie last year. And now, do you have any idea did the Colts did what happened to this Muncie Flyers franchise? Did they move to it, another city or did they just stop existing? I think they just stopped existing. Okay, got it. Um, because the Colts came from Baltimore. That's right, they did. I knew good yeah. nice, nice. Good and knowledge. if you ever watch the a Baltimore Colts game, uh-huh. Baltimore indie game, they don't refer them to the Indianapolis Colts. What do they call them? The professional football team from Indianapolis. That's that's what people from Baltimore will say? Yeah. Wow. Because because they're still upset about the Colts leaving Baltimore. That reminds me of Seattle people who are super bitter about the Supersonics leaving, and uh, and they, they could care less about the Oklahoma City Thunder where they moved. Anyways, that's a totally <laughs> different subject. But uh, very good question, John. I that is 
that would have been the last thing I expected to learn today. Great, great job. Yeah. All right. Well, here's your next Lomita question. Uh, consisting of 15 cities, what is the region of Los Angeles that Lomita is in called? Collection of 15 cities, Lomita's in it. What is that region called? Is it the Port of Los Angeles, the West Side, the Coastal Cities, or the South Bay? Well, you kind of maybe gave it away earlier without thinking about it. Mm -hmm. Because you said Lomita was about a half hour south of L.A. I don't remember saying that. (laughs) (laughs) But at the same time, I mean, so I'm either thinking the South Bay... Or maybe the coastal cities, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. because I feel like the port of Los Angeles would be more not residential but commercial. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, I see your logic. So I mean, I don't know if Lomita and the other fifteen cities are on a bay or not. To be honest, I've never actually looked at a map of LA that mm-hmm. much. Yeah, why would you really? Right. Like I know San Francisco's got bays, mm-hmm. but I don't know if LA does. Which is why you're now debating whether to pick. Sounds like you're kind of between the South Bay and the coastal cities. I am, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I feel like this could kind of depend on, like, if you're from LA, you might refer to it as the South Bay. But if you're from one of those 15 cities, you might call it the coastal cities. <laughs> like, I, I, I could see it going either way. But South Bay was kind of my first guess, like the first thing that hit. So I'm going to go with that. You're going to stick with that first instinct? Yep. Good job. The South Bay. I am from the South Bay. That's what I tell people. And it's funny because it, you're right. San Francisco has a has an enormous bay, the San Francisco Bay. And it's funny because people in the mm-hmm. Bay Area, I believe there's a South Bay up in Northern California. And so when they hear there's one here, they think we're like posers or we're stealing it from <laughs> it. We've, we've been in the South Bay forever. So yeah, it's 15 cities. It's the southern tip of the Santa Monica Bay. So the same okay. bay that has Santa Monica and Venice Beach and all these beaches. It it kind of curves out and then and then comes back in and the and where that where that end of that tip is is Manhattan Beach, Hermosa Beach, Redondo Beach, Torrance, Lomita, Lawndale, these cities that you've probably never heard of, but we are part of that collection. The port of you were right. The port of Los Angeles is just kind of um, south from the South Bay and it is very industrial. It's right by there. Um, the coastal cities, I, I swear, there's a a sign on a freeway in Riverside, which is maybe 40, 50 miles east of LA that is you're coming on the 91 freeway. I'm pretty sure there's a, Oh no, it doesn't say the coastal cities. It says beach cities this way. <laughs> and, and so they, they didn't want to just say South Bay or whatever. That's the only place I've ever seen that sign. And, uh, and the West side was the other choice that that is a real thing. That's where I live right now on West LA. And that's like Santa Monica and Culver city and this, this West LA that I'm, that I'm currently living in. Okay. You ready for your next one? Bring it on. True or false. Oh. <laughs> Muncie was known as Little Chicago at one point. <laughs> I love your true and false questions because they could. They, I, I I thought about putting a true and false question in my quiz just for this exact reason because they could be just a totally bizarre, funny fact that you made up. That if I choose true, it's like, oh my god, I fell for his little trick. And if I choose false, it's like, well, dang it, I should have known it was so bizarre. It should have been true. Um, <laughs> Muncie was once known as Little Chicago. That would be hilarious. Now, they are in different states, Illinois Mm -hmm. versus Indiana. I don't know geographically if they're like, you know, uh, if it's like a kind of a direct uh, direct shot, you know, from each other, like east-west to each other. Um, Road-wise, no. Mm -hmm. Uh, About maybe because of the roads, about a four-hour drive, give or take. Okay. Okay. Southeast of Chicago. Southeast of Chicago. Wow. So in, <laughs> uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna show my lack of geography knowledge of the Midwest. Indiana is east of Illinois. Illinois. Yep. Wow. I would have guessed west. I want and I and I <laughs> and I lived in Indiana for four months or whatever that was. Okay, man. I I just got. I'm cho- I'm choosing false. I think you made this up, John, and I'm choosing false. Incorrect. I'm such a fool. (laughs) It's from the Prohibition era, the 1920s. Gambling, prostitution, and bootleg liquor were big. It was a big industry in in Muncie. Oh, is Uh, that why their slogan is gambling, liquor, et cetera, here? (laughs) (laughs) 
I mean, I remember, I mean, growing up, uh, we have a fantastic uh, civic theater in Muncie. Cool. Um, and I remember growing up and uh, being told one time that there were some doors in the civic theater that Capone would use to go to go in and out. Wow, special Al Capone doors. Yeah. I don't know if that's true or not. That's That sounds a lot cooler than Judy Garland singing vaudeville, I'm going to be honest. <laughs> I mean, both are pretty cool. Both are pretty cool. But yeah. if that's true, that's very cool. Mm-hmm. Nice. Wow. Muncie was little Chicago. Dang it. Wow. I started off one for one. I thought I was uh, going to, I'm one for three now. Oh my gosh. And what are you? You are. I'm two for three. You've surpassed me. Oh my goodness. We're, we're on opposite trends right now. Okay. Well, let's see if I can slow you down with number four then. <laughs> what is, speaking of slogans, what is Lomita's slogan? Is it A, the city by the sea, B, the friendly city, C, the city of character, or D, the breezy city. I'm gonna go with friendly city. Just gonna, just gonna go with it. You're not yeah. gonna overthink it. Yep, not gonna overthink it. Should I just play the sound effect now and let you know? Go ahead. Dang it, you're good. <laughs> uh, I had, a, I had a hard time coming up with these extra answers because I wanted something to sound legit, and mm-hmm. I was worried that friendly city was gonna sound too plain and you might overlook it. But um, yeah, it is. It's just the friendly city, which is nice. Don't get me wrong. That's very nice. But it's nothing like bizarre or obscure. Yeah. And I realized even by adding the breezy city, that that's more, um, if you're from here, that might throw you off. Because you wouldn't know that. Like, one of, the, one of the nice things about the South Bay is there's always a breeze coming in. It's, in fact, uh, the local newspaper to the area is called the Daily Breeze. And I remember when I, I went to college at the University of Laverne, which is about 40 miles inland from Lomita, mm-hmm. Um, it was always super hot there in the summer, really stagnant, really still. And on my drive home, I'd get to this point where I'd be by the South Bay and I'd roll my windows down and this cool breeze would come in and it would be like (laughs) 15 degrees cooler. So it is not the breezy city. It's the friendly city. You got it right. Bravo. (laughs) Gosh, so you're three for four. I am. My prediction's about to come true. I'm not going to, I'm not, I'm not trying to make my prediction come true. I'm trying to beat you. I got to get this one right. Well, it's a true false. So you got another one. I know. Oh, this is terrible. (laughs) Bob Ross painted here in Muncie. Well, my theory is that Bob Ross is painted everywhere. So I think I should choose true. But hang on. Let me let me talk this through. Bob Ross, if you don't know who he's the he's the painter with the afro and he's he's what's his slogan? Um, uh, Happy little trees or something like that. Yeah, it's something that he says. It's it's something like that. I had a Christmas T-shirt with him on, and he was painting a bunch of Christmas trees. It was very close. <laughs> again, again, the the ultimate dilemma of did John just pick a name out of a hat and thought, oh, it'd be funny to put Bob Ross. And last time I chose false, thinking he was trying to pick me, trick me. I want to say true, and I'm going to. I'm saying true. Correct. Yes. <laughs> His the entire show of the joy of painting. Joy of painting, is, thank that, you. That's his show. Uh-huh. Was filmed in Muncie. No way. Mm-hmm. Muncie has a local PBS station as well as NPR station, but the PBS station, from my understanding, was in one of the old Ball Brothers houses uh, along the White River. Um, there's a they all built mansions along the river, but uh, yeah, he Bob Ross. They filmed the show. Um, when the station was in one of those houses. And just recently, I think it opened last year, they kind of took that house and put it back to the way it was cool. when he was there and opened up the Bob Ross experience. And so they actually have paintings on display. I haven't been able to go to it yet, but from my understanding is they'll rotate, like they'll have a painting on his easel. Okay. And then... Um, they've got the old cameras and stuff with the viewfinders, and they'll actually have the episode that correlates to that painting going in the viewfinder. That is cool. Bob Ross is a gift, man. What a what, a, what a gift to our nation. I should know. Did, did Bob Ross pass away just a few years ago? Is he? Do you know if he's? Uh, it's been a while. I think. It's been a while since he passed. Yeah. Got um... it. Yeah. Now I'm looking. Oh wow! It was 95. Oh my yeah. gosh. I feel like he's had a resurgence then. Like, yeah, you no, know, there, there, he's totally had a resurgence. I don't know why. Yeah, why uh, is, it, is it the internet? Is it just just like memes? And... I think so. I, I think it's you know the internet. You know the shows are up online. You can just sit there like they're on Netflix. You can just sit there and have a marathon of Bob Ross. What a great resurgence! I think if if there's going to yeah. be a resurgence of something, that's a great thing to be resurged. 
All right, good question. So here we go. I'm two for four. You're three for four. The best I can do is tie. I need you to miss this. All right, so do your best to miss it. In the 1930s, Lomita was the self-proclaimed blank capital of the world. They were the blank capital of the world. Is it A, strawberry, B, orange, C, celery, or D, radish? I'm not going to say strawberry because strawberries are something that we can grow easily around here. Oranges, yeah, you can grow oranges out there, but that's more of a Florida thing. Mm -hmm. I know radishes, like to get that nice heat and crisp to them, you need a more drier heat, Mm -hmm. which I definitely know California has that, but I don't think it's where you live. Mm. So I'm going to go with celery. Celery is your choice, according to the deductive reasoning you just used. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Bravo, John. You pulled off another victory, my friend. <laughs> Dang, you're good. So so here's the interesting thing is that uh, it, definitely celery capital of the world was the thing. I, I always thought it was like a legit thing, but it's, it's totally a self-proclaimed thing. It was probably more of a marketing thing, like we grow the best celery in the world. In fact... When I was doing a search of this, there is a city in Colorado that call, that, that is the celery capital of the world. I want to look it up because uh, Arveda or Arvada, Colorado, apparently is the celery capital of the world. And that makes me a little bit jealous because um, I've always considered Lomita to be that. But yeah, it's something they claimed. But they also apparently could have just as easily claimed strawberry capital of the world because they, they produced a mass amount of that. Um, oranges are actually a very popular item. In fact, um, that's why Orange County is called Orange County because it used to be Orange Groves where Disneyland sits was, was right. once just Orange Groves. Radish was the random choice. I was going to make it even, I was going to make it rutabaga, but I was like, okay, well, no, he's going to rule that out right away. So let me make it something a little more believable. But yeah, celeries were, were it. And, and, you know, Lomita was, um, founded for agriculture and there was mm-hmm. fields and fields. In fact, I said at the beginning that th- there, that Lomita is just under two square miles. It used to be seven square miles of land. And then our rival Torrance, that's a, the, our neighboring city. They, they took a whole bunch of that land. They took five, mi- five square miles of that land. And I always equate Lomita and Torrance to like uh, Springfield and Shelbyville in, um, <laughs> in the Simpsons where like Springfield is Lomita. It's the hometown and Shelbyville are the evil bad guys or uh, Pawnee and Eagleton in parks and recreation. Right. There's another, um, but yeah, so celery was what they were known for. And um, now I've, I've never seen a stock of cel- uh, celery in Lomita. So <laughs> the times have changed. Maybe you'll have to have your parents start growing it. I should. I should. I should tell. Hopefully, if you're listening right now, mother or father, go plant some well, celery well, in the backyard. Maybe we should start this as a, you know, a grass or a celery roots uh, campaign. Yes. And just get everyone to grow celery in Lomita. Put the celery back in Lomita. <laughs> we have just started a movement, John. All right. Well, I guess I have pride on the line, right? So you, you uh, successfully got three out of five. No. Four out of five. You just missed yep. the first one. Wow. Mm-hmm. Usually you miss the last one, but you missed the first right. one. All right. So we'll see if I can at least get a three out of five here. John Dillager would stop by Muncie occasionally, but he would never rob anything because he was afraid he would be stopped by what? Trains, police, citizens, or traffic? That's unbelievable. I, so I don't, I don't think I even know who John Dillinger is, but I've gathered from the question that he's a famous criminal. He is. Uh, I mean, there's been a movie with Johnny Depp. Oh, where he played Dillinger. Wow. Uh, I mean, there's the band Dillinger Escape Plan. He's a, he's a somewhat famous gangster. He's a, so he's a I mean, fi- we're talking you know 1930s. Yeah, and you talked about Al Capone potentially having ties to Muncie. So mm-hmm. so this makes sense. Now, what was he afraid would stop him? Trains. Police, citizens, traffic. I'm going to rule out police because that seems like, yeah, that would be what would stop you. Any what trains, I mean, like, yeah, tr- maybe it's just that there's so many tracks surrounding Mun- Muncie that if he gets in, he's worried he won't be able to get out because there'll be a train that takes forever to pass by. That's So far, that's my leading choice. Okay, a, a citizen's arrest, that's another citizen's. M- maybe Muncie has a bunch of stand-up citizens. Who would have stopped? Traffic could be the same sort of idea as trains. I think because my gut was going with trains, I have to go with it because if I if it, if it is it and I don't choose it, I'm going to kick myself. So I'm going with trains. You are correct. Yeah. Was my logic right? 
Yeah, basically. I mean, and I've had this happen to me where I've actually gotten stuck between two tracks <laughs> with trains that have stopped. Wow. Oh, and they're literally stopped. They're literally stopped. And like, I'm just stuck there until one of them moves. And you're like, hashtag Indiana life. <laughs> Pretty much. I mean, this, and this is like, this was near downtown too. Wow. Like it wasn't out somewhere crazy. Wow. But yeah, Dillinger, um, you know, 1930s bank robber was even portrayed in the news somewhat as a modern day Robin Hood. No way. So he was yeah. like doing it for, he was helping out the poor or? Not necessarily, but it was more seen of he was uh, taking from the rich. And, you know, Muncie does have a lot of trains. So, I mean, like if you work in Muncie, you sometimes have to account for trains. Okay. And, you know, maybe leave a little earlier than you would think you should. But yeah, he was afraid that he would get stopped by a train and couldn't get out of town. Or, or so the story goes. And... I had recollections of my great grandfather telling me that Dillinger would occasionally like had stopped by the family, our family farm a couple times. Really? Yeah. And so I asked my grandmother, like I texted her this morning when I was doing this and everything. I'm like, am I going crazy or do I remember <laughs> these stories? This. And she vaguely remembered that story. Wow. So the story could be a, you know, completely made up thing that my grandpa, my great grandpa just, you know, said, or <laughs> there could be some family history with Dillinger. Your your grandpa could be an an a better of of crime for John Dillinger by how maybe it's, he housed him. Yeah, I, it's possible. Um, wow. I, yeah, you have but. proven to me that Muncie is way more badass than I expected. <laughs> Every episode, John, I'm blown away by your quizzes because I'm. I'm sitting here in fancy Southern California thinking my questions are going to be better. And then Muncie goes and is like, yeah, we have gangsters and my grandpa once housed a criminal here, you know? It's the Midwest. We got nothing else to do. Well, man, I feel uh, I feel honored to learn about your hometown. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed learning about Lomita. It's, yeah, I did. You know, and I will say, like, I Lomita is definitely what made me. It's um, mm -hmm. I think because it's a small town and sort of plays the role of the underdog – you know, I'm, I'm learning to I'm learning to be a little bit more uh, confident in myself, but I, I've kind of always had that sort of value of like, look, I don't need to think I'm bigger or better or badder than anyone else. There's a certain like kind of uh, humility that comes with being from a town like that. And I, I love me some Lomita, man. I played Lomita Little League Baseball. I played sports at Lomita Park. It, it is definitely what made me. So shout out to my hometown. Yeah, I mean, Muncie's not a big town. Even in the Midwest, I consider Muncie to be a medium maybe size town gotcha I mean, it's obviously not a small size town you know but yeah i mean kind of like you know i it's not indy it's not fort wayne it's yeah. not or chicago you know obviously yeah but it's still it's little chicago it, yeah it's little it's little <laughs> chicago <laughs> I'd be curious what the uh, how much of the general population in America even has heard of Muncie, Indiana. I, you know, it could be it could be more than I expect, but um, I, my guess is it might be more than Lomita. Yeah, I, I think yeah, probably. I, I think I think you're probably accurate uh, on that. Yeah, I mean, you've you've got Muncie that's been you know it's been referenced in Park and Rec. Yes, you know Letterman has you know talked about Muncie many times. I've even heard it in some movies. I forget like every once in a while, I'll, Muncie will get mentioned, and I'm like. What? what? How? How is this happening? Or like they'll, you know, they'll show video from Muncie. I'm like, yeah, that's not Muncie. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, Lomita doesn't really get that. What I will say is Quentin Tarantino, not from Lomita, but from the South Bay. He actually mm -hmm. went to the same high school as me. He dropped out. But a lot of the movies uh, that he made, including Pulp Fiction and Reservoir Dogs, those take place in the little surroundings in my neighborhoods. I, I, don't, right. I don't know that they ever reference Lomita or go into Lomita, but yeah, that's uh, I always love watching those movies and being like, whoa, cool, Hawthorne, or, or what, you know, whatever <laughs> city is right nearby. So, well, uh, John, great job. Glad to know your hometown. Yeah. Um, we are uh, stepping into our next episode, which mm -hmm. we have a theme song that we play at the beginning of every episode. We do. And in it... Um, the two specific things that are that are shouted out about us is that I like the Dodgers and that you play on the Xbox. Yes, and I also threw a Nintendo because it was a good rhyme. But you are an Xbox guy, so in order to actually prove our theme song right, that we actually are interested in these things, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna quiz John on the Los Angeles Dodgers, and John's gonna quiz me on the Xbox. I think I'll just tease you with a question for next week. <laughs> About the Xbox? Yep, I already thought of one. 
Okay. I hope it's I hope what, it's how do you spell Xbox? What was the nickname for the original controller? Oh my god. Is is this do you think that's good? Do I have to answer it now? No, no, no. I I, to, I'm ju- I'm just teasing you with that question. I have to think about next. it. It's going to it's going to take everything in my power not to google that all week, but I won't. I promise you. I never look into any of these topics beforehand. I come in cold every time. Same. All right, man. Well, uh yeah, you, sorry, go. Do you have something you want to say? No, I was just going to say, you know, Follow us on the on the socials yes. on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Yeah, uh, you can do it. You know, listen to it on YouTube if you want. Any of the podcast apps, just search for Lack of Genius. Yeah, we sh- we uh, shared a review that we got last week. We didn't know who yeah. it was from. It's from uh, it's from my my sis. I consider her my friend also, but she's my sister's best friend, Shannon, and her son's name is Ben. He's I believe ten years old. Apparently, he's our biggest fan. And if you want that title, you're gonna have to fight Ben for it. But thank you to both of you guys for listening. We appreciate you. Yeah, and don't forget, I mean, we're not saying go do it, but if you want to give us money. Yeah, we'll take it. We'll take it, you know. <laughs> I, I, I'm not too uh, proud to yeah. not take it. Um, but you can, fi- you can find us over at Patreon. Um, just You can search Patreon for Lack of Genius or go to patreon.com slash lack of genius. Yeah. Uh, and you can do it there if you want. Or if you just want to send a check to Kevin or I, yeah, ask for we'll our home it. addresses. We'll yeah. take it. Yeah, look, we're, we're this is a passion project for us. We're both it very is. excited about this, but we are putting a lot of work into it. I'll be honest, like I, oh, yeah. between social media and planning these questions, and I'm not saying this to complain or to ask for props. I love it. I'm having a blast. But you oh, know, yeah. um, uh, you know, there's also there's expenses that come with it. There's websites, uh, domains that we have to pay for. There's uh, there's pot, there's services for posting that we. That we uh, pay money to, and so you know, it, it, to, to... I, I feel like we have a lot of NPR listeners. So think of this as your NPR pledge drive. There you go. We're in <laughs> we're in the pledge drive. The lack of genius pledge drive is happening right now. All right. Till next week, then. Yes, John. Until next week. Until next week. Lack of genius podcast. Thumbs up to you, my friend. See ya. It's the lack of genius podcast in your ear holes at last. They don't know they're Mars and Venus, that's why it's the Lack of Genius Podcast.